on the Sunday morning in January, in the, in the Robben Islands they were on, the guards came along and they took all the political prisoners out and they beat them up. And the political prisoners could not understand why the guards had beaten them all up. And then after about a day or so, they realized the guards were more prepared to talk. And the guards said to them, that we beat you up because those friends of yours in Ireland protested against the rugby team. And the message Jonas Boots came, uh, came back with, he said, he said, the political prisoners said, we'd like to be beaten up every day so that we know that the world is thinking about the situation in South Africa. We're talking about apartheid. We're talking about um, a 15-year-old who had heard the word for the first time, not understanding what it was. It was at a public meeting uh, where um, members of different political parties had come together to try and form a protest uh, against the Springboks team that were coming to visit Ireland to play an international match against the Irish rugby team, but they were staying in Bray. I don't remember most of the players feelings on the matter, but I think the IRFU were in favour of, of the match. I mean, there were, there were people speaking up on the opposite platform that the protests were wrong. Uh, probably somebody looking back now from 30 or 35 years distance wonders why people didn't react. Most people just went without meaning any offence. This was the largest march, I think, that Dublin had seen for a very, very long time. It was the largest march the anti the movement ever had. And if my memory serves me right, it was a, a day full of expectations. When I went, when I actually hit the town and I felt the tension, that was really, that was huge. It was like, oh my God, something, it was like something was going to happen. Something, you, you can't even describe it. It wasn't electric, it was like fear. My memory was that the slogans were shouted across and it was very, very peaceful, but very disciplined and very, very noisy. I can remember uh, cheers, I can remember bills, I can remember shoving and pushing. It seemed to take forever, but it happened in seconds and minutes. And in next to no time, the team were in the hotel. Even inside the grounds, there was minor protests. People who were, were protesting about the match had gotten tickets, and there was a little sporadic. Uh, protests inside the match, but they, they died down very quickly. You know? They were there to enjoy you know, a rugby match between Ireland and, and one of the super powers in rugby at the time. And people just enjoyed it, I think. You know? Well, I'm, I'm a South African. I was born in South Africa. I saw at first hand the impact of apartheid. The slogan of the African National Congress was freedom in our lifetime. And many of us did believe we would get freedom in our lifetime. And of course, many didn't. And during the dark days of the 70s and the early 80s, some people became pessimistic. But throughout the 35 years that I was involved, my one and only uh, mission was to ensure that South Africa became free. It was just very hard to get a grip on the situation. And for somebody to be confronted when he was going in the gate of Lansdowne Road with two stand tickets in his hand, sort of make up your mind time and don't go in there. Afterwards, when some of the facts of what was happening in South Africa became more <clears throat> public, uh, I probably wouldn't have gone. I think a lot of people probably felt that afterwards, you know. I think the country was beginning to change and I think that that's, it certainly was um, at that time. The 60s had been very liberating, and I remember, um, you know, even within my own family, my sister going to dances and things like that, and uh, all the girls, and there was beatniks and teddy boys, and, you know, culture was actually, Irish culture was changing very quickly. So I think that this political change was happening as well, and, um, you know, it was very exciting times. The gates were open, you could see you were heading for freedom. You didn't know what, what freedom meant, you know, but you could taste something was in the air and um, you just wanted more of it, you know. <laughs>